Hi. Okay, hair for not going to the, de um, not having the hair done for a while, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, but I just wanted to check in with everybody and see and say hi. And and for some reason, I'm in a really really good mood today. I don't know what it is. Ah, I but I'm in a really really good mood. Um. Oh, I've, okay, so my Mother's Day, my daughter, my one daughter flew all the way out from New York and um, to see me, which is really, really sweet. So the three of us, three, us three girls, went to the park and had a beautiful view of the ocean and sat there and with our masks on, of course. And I saw a bunch of people walking around without their masks. And I'm very upset at you. If you're one of those people that I saw without the mask, I have now become the official police mask person. I am calling you out if you don't wear, well, listen, what did we do all this for? What did we do all of this for if we're not gonna wear our masks? That's the least we can do. So I thought I would tell a story today of how I became Tawny, how I became Tawny Katane. I was 12 years old and I was living a middle-class, beautiful life in Huntington Beach with my parents. Um, I was a surfer chick. It was the, the dream, it was like the dream life for a mid middle-class people. Just, you know, my dad worked for my grandfather and, you know, was the manager um, up in, managed the Orange Coast area for my grandfather's business. Um, my grandfather is the one who, remember the jack-in-the-box heads? Remember that? All the neon that they used for the jack-in-the-box heads and everything? That was my grandfather's company that made all those jack-in-the-box heads. And uh, Jolly Rogers and j all this stuff. And um, he was very, very successful. Um, and then my parents, who I never saw get into an argument or anything, um, decided to get divorced. So we... We had to we had to move we couldn't afford to, that house by ourselves without our dad so we moved back down to San Diego where I was originally born and we moved this time to a place called El Cajon and El Cajon is well it's um we were we had to go on welfare we were um we had uh, food stamps, and um, I remember sitting in the car with my mom, because I was older, I was 12, and my brother and sister were like four and five, so they don't really remember um, the, the, the things that I do. And I remember sitting in the car with my mom in a big Chevy, you know, with no seat belts or anything, um, and my mom was crying. Um, and we didn't really, I didn't really understand why, but I knew, I knew something was different. She was about to walk into a grocery store with food stamps, which she had never done. And her, her mother and father were extremely wealthy, but their opinion was we were my dad's kids and it was my father's responsibility to take care of us, not my grandmother. So... So she had her daughter go on welfare, and um, she, my mom cleaned houses for um, the elderly during the day, and at night she was going to school to become a nurse. So there was no, and then my dad, my dad lived in a single, swing and singles apartment, having the time of his life. They were best friends, my mom and dad. Still, after they got divorced, my dad would come over to the house all the time. It was like they never, still to the day my mother passed away, my mom and dad were the best of friends. The best of friends. When it was Mother's Day, we all knew to go to my mom's house because that's where my stepmom, who I love so much, Durst, was there with my dad. And if it was Father's Day, we would go to my dad's house and I'm talking about me and my brother and sister and my mom and Frederico would come. And it was just, it was like that. It was just, it was incredible. That's what I know about divorce. The divorce that I know are two people that still communicate and, and 
not even for the sake of the kids. My, my parents had a friendship. And, and so they, and I saw that and it was wonderful to me. Um, but it still obviously affected, affected, you know, the entire family. A divorce always affects a family. And then you think it's your fault and so on and so forth. So one day, and this is how my name came about, I was uh, going to a brand new school because we moved in the summer. And now instead of going to Edison in Huntington Beach or Eater Junior High School, I had to go to El Cajon Junior High. And I'm in a field and there are a couple boys ahead of me going to school and one ye boy yelled to the other boy, hey, Tawny. And I went, Tawny, oh my God, I love that name. That's what I'm gonna be. I can't be Julie Ellen Katane anymore, the surfer chick from Huntington Beach because she no longer exists. I mean, she does inside, but you know what I mean. I, it's a completely different life. You're living in welfare apartments. You're, you're landlocked. There's no ocean around you. And all I ever knew was the ocean. So I walked into my classroom. It was seventh grade. So I walk into the classroom to the teacher, and I give her the papers and tell her, I'm, obviously, I'm new in school. I tell her that my name is Tawny. So because it was before 9-11, many, many, many years before then, there was no, do you have ID? So she just took my word for it, principal took my word for it, and they just put Tawny on everything. To the point where I went and got my driver's license with um, an ID that said Tawny <laughs> Julie Katane on it, and I had never legally changed my name. And so I've been Tawny this entire time, and never legally changed it, but everything legally is in my name. So, so now it's legally my name because I pay taxes on, Tawny Katain pays taxes all the time. So it was just, it's, in, it's in, incredible, crazy. I mean, had I not been walking that particular day and those two boys, I would be Julie, you guys would all know me as Julie Katane and not Tawny. And, and my family, they call me Julie. They don't call me Tawny. They don't let me get away with that. Um, so, and then they, my dad calls me Jules. Um, my, I have a bunch of nicknames. My, my, some of my best friends call me my one best friend that I've had forever, Kat, who I love. I've known her since I was 15 years old. She calls me Tauntaun. Taun. Um, some, uh, my ex-husband calls me Julio. Um, and uh, my dad calls me Jules, if I didn't already say that. So anyway, that's the story about how I became Tawny Katain. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. There's many, many, many more stories and much more fascinating stories, but I thought I would start with that one. So enjoy yourselves. The reason why it sounds really weird, my voice sounds really weird, is I have a dental work done and I had a bunch of stitches in the roof of my mouth and they're still there. And um, so I'm, I'm talking with a lisp and it's gonna be like this for about four months because they said it takes so long. It's like the roof of my mouth after what they did is exactly what the doctor explained to me. She goes, it's like a pizza burn. So that's exactly what it's like. So the roof of my mouth is just killing me. Um, and I have a fake tooth in right now because I had to have some work on this tooth. It fell out. So I'm talking with a lift. <laughs> Should I edit that part out? and <laughs> Just or forget it. Forget it. It is what it is. And I'm just dealing with it, obviously, with no makeup and dirty hair. But that's life. And uh, I wish you all the best. And I'll check in with you guys later. Thanks for watching. Like it and subscribe. Yay. Be safe and wear your masks.